Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's episode, I wanted to cover the second part of tuberculosis. So last week, we covered some of the risk factors for TB, uh, like homeless people, incarcerated patients, uh, anyone that has immigrated from an area that has a high risk for TB, um, and also never forget about healthcare workers who can come in contact with TB. And then we talked about the different types of TB. So there's primary, there's chronic or latent TB, and then there's reactivation TB, which is more common in individuals whose immune system has waned. And then we talked about some of the chest x-ray findings of TB, um, in which I sent you some homework on at the end of the video. And finally, never forget about the screening process for TB, um, and that's that PPD placement right under the skin. And some of the pearls for that are remembering the different widths of induration that is tested positive for uh, contact for TB. So for this week, I want to talk about more about the diagnosis of TB and the treatment for TB. So let's get started. When it comes to the diagnosis of TB, the initial test of choice is usually a chest x-ray. Uh, this is also used in patients who have a positive PPD for whatever reason. And chest x-rays are also very good in telling what type of TB you may be dealing with. And that is that homework I sent you home with, so let's take a look at those chest x-rays. Okay, so this is one of the first chest x-rays I showed you last week, and if you guessed this was primary TB, you are correct. Primary TB will typically show in the hyalur adenopathy as the most common manifestation, yet unfortunately a lot of the time the chest x-ray is normal in primary TB. And for this picture, if you guessed this was reactivation TB, you would have been correct. Reactivation TB will classically present as localized infections in the apical or otherwise in the upper lobes of the lungs, and cavitary lesions are a common presentation with reactivation TB. Okay, and for this chest x-ray, if you guessed this was miliary TB, you would be correct. Miliary TB presents with the classic millet seed chest x-ray findings indicative of that homogeneous disseminated spread of TB that I mentioned before in last week's video. Now, if you guessed that this was a GON complex, then you would have been correct. GON complexes are a sequelae of a primary infection that has consolidated to, to a granuloma. This is a combination of the hyalur lymph node involvement and parenchymal granuloma that has fibrotic changes associated after the primary infection has waned. So, since some chest x-rays can be normal, um, it is advised to get a chest CT of the chest looking for any tuberculosis-like changes. Um, if you are highly suspected of TB, I would get a sputum culture to test for those acid fast bacilli that are common in TB, um, and those culture results are the definitive diagnosis. So when it comes to the treatment for tuberculosis, it depends on if it is active or reactivated TB. And if it's active TB, I like to use the mnemonic of RIPE, which stands for rifampin, isoniazid, parazidamide, and ethambutol. And these four drugs will be initiated for a total of two months, and then for the next four months, only two drugs will be initiated, and that is rifampin and isoniazid. For latent TB infections, the drug of choice is isoniazid uh, for a duration of 9 to 12 months. And this is started just to decrease the likelihood of getting reactivation TB in the future. Now, uh, the side effects of the drugs used to treat tuberculosis are very high yield for your boards. So um, there are a couple little mnemonics that I wanted you to use to help you remember them. And the first one for rifampin, which is the first part of RIPE, um, rifampin starts with an R, and this drug will likely cause red-orange secretions coming from the body. Um, it also might cause red-orange urine coming out of the body. Um, and that red starts with an R, and so does rifampin. So R and R, red-orange secretions. And um, other side effects may include thrombocytopenia or hepatitis. When it comes to isoniazide, the common side effect here is peripheral neuropathy. Um, and so when you say the word isoniazide, it sounds like you're about to say isonum. So like, I'm so numb. So what causes numbness? Peripheral neuropathy. Um, another thing you want to remember about this drug is to always give vitamin B6 with it to try and prevent this peripheral neuropathy. When it comes to parazinamide, 
Uh, this drug starts with the letter of P, so I like to remember that it causes the photosensitivity type rash, um, so these patients can't be in the sun for too long. Uh, it also causes hepatitis, just like the rifampin, and it can exacerbate gout by causing hyperuricemia. And then when it comes to ethambutol, this drug starts with the letter E, and so I like to remember that this can cause eye problems. Uh, so this drug can cause optic neuritis or it can cause red-green color changes. Mm -hmm.